rounds. Amir Khan is averaging 56 thrown, 12 landed. Zab Judah is averaging 23 thrown, 4 landed. End of story so far. Well, it looks like Zab's just hoping that one of those four does enough damage that he can go into finisher mode. But in the meantime, you know, I wouldn't say he looks finished. He's still throwing those bombs. He's still trying to execute a game plan. But, um, you know, he's losing every round and getting beaten up. He looks like he just hasn't found his way into the fight tactically against a bigger man, Emmanuel. And, 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 and Khan is fighting the fight perfect at the distance where he can punch very effectively. And he's reduced Zab to primarily being a defensive fighter. How about the precision of Khan's punches, Emmanuel, from long range? He's doing everything perfect. And now Judah is once again bothered by an eye after once again apparently their heads came together. Let's go, let's go. And among Khan's many other advantages, he seems to survive the butts back. Yes, and that's amazing that Zab is the one with the bald head and Zab is the shorter fighter. But every time that they have collisions, it seems like he gets the worst of it. Zab's really trying to hit a home run with those uppercuts now. Well, he saw Maidana land some uppercuts against Khan. That was regarded as one of Khan's defensive weaknesses, susceptibility to the uppercut. But, of course, Freddie Roach watches the fights, too, and he goes to work very specifically with Khan in the gym on those things that he sees from fight to fight. I think Khan is a much improved fighter from the other fights that I've seen him. This is that his left best might have hurt Judah. Judah's a little bit wary against the ropes. Khan knows he landed the left hook well. Now goes to the right. He's busting Zab's face up. It's pretty obvious Zab can't box with him in the middle of the ring. If that was the strategy, it's time to change. Emmanuel, what does he do? Max, and just what you said, just change. He needs to fight. He's systematically being defeated and going to get stopped anyway. So he's got nothing to lose. He needs to let it all hang out. It doesn't he, look like there's a plan B. No, he's, he's letting the guys out hustling. You know, he's, he's an accurate puncher and a bigger puncher Ooh. than he is. But he's not punching back enough. He what he did the there, he should that's, do more. That's the, the punch that Fernell Whitaker wants to see him throw. And that's one of his best punches. Man. It seemed to stop Khan for a minute there. Khan got up on his toes after he took that uppercut in the gut. Well, when he makes that little bend down to his left, he's always in perfect position to shoot that punch. Plus, that's his favorite punch anyway. Draculich is calling this a knockdown on a body shot. Khan comes to the neutral corner. Judah clearly Seven. thought he got hit low. He's not going to make it up. Nine. This is going to be a knockout victory for Amir. And Zab Judah believes that he was fouled, but he's not going to win the argument. Did he not hear the count right in his face? Because he acted as though he, he was acted surprised. as though he couldn't get up. As I'd though like, his legs were done. We're going to take a look at that soon enough and see if it was in fact low. It was close. I think it may have been right on the belt line. Whatever I, I it was. can't see a man being in I can't see a man being in pain for a really low blow. That's a punch that Daddy so hit him in the stomach that really hurt him. Because the protective cup, you're not gonna be down that long. Let's take a look at the replay and see where it was. First the right hand upstairs. Legal or illegal, Emmanuel? 